So now it's your turn. You get the opportunity to ask these previous directors and current director some questions. So if you have a question, please use the microphone. Identify yourself and your institution. So we will form a line. There's going to be a microphone there. You can have mine. Oh, okay. thank you. You can take one. If you have a question, please feel free to come up to the microphone. Don't be shy. I'll go. Uh, Christopher Fox, CEO of AADOCR. Thank you all for being here and having this wonderful, rich discussion. In addition to celebrating 75 years, we also want to be looking forward. What advice do you have to the dental community to not only be successful in NIDCR uh, funding, but we have this new entity, Institute, uh, ARPA-H. How does our community be competitive against those dollars? Because that leaves more NIDCR dollars for others. So how do we be successful with ARPA-H, Dr. Tabeck? So, of course, this is the newest um, entity um, at NIH. Um, and they are built along the DARPA model. So in theory, they will be disease agnostic. They will be platform centric. So if you think back to some of the things that have occurred over the last number of years, they would have been the ones who would have funded the mRNA vaccine proof of concept to create a new platform of vaccine development. And DARPA has taken some credit, not all, but some. Uh, they are the ones who may develop the new salivary or curricular fluid or whatever other you know, body fluid you want paradigm for going forward in keeping not only diagnosis, but in keeping people healthy. Um, I suspect they're going to have a very rich um, emphasis on prevention of disease rather than treatment of disease. And they're going to look at the entire human within the context of society. So for those of you who are more community-based, they really want to enter into partnerships with other government uh, departments like commerce and housing and, 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 and so forth. To, to really understand how to keep people healthy, not only as a human, as an individual, but in the context of their local community and the context of society more broadly. So they're gonna, they're gonna pick you know, big, hairy things to work on, and I hope very, very, very much that members of the community represented here will be active, um, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 in seeking their, their support because they are, they are certainly on a growth curve and, and it will allow you to expand dramatically the type of work that you have, you know, previously envisioned regardless of what institute or center funded you, which, which is of course, you know, much more narrow in the focus. So if, for those in the back who couldn't hear, uh, Rena uh, suggested that perhaps electronic health records might be one um, avenue, and certainly mining electronic health records, particularly if they have dental health records <laughs> attached, um, you know, are a very rich source. And indeed, and this is just part of the pandemic story that really people don't know a lot about, about but every Sunday morning for about 18 months, uh, Drs. Collins, Fauci, and I, along with others from NIH, met with our counterparts in South Africa. Why were we meeting with our counterparts in South Africa? Because they have such robust electronic health records 
that they could predict where we were going to be in eight weeks. And they were right throughout the entire pandemic. That was the power. They have two systems, the private system, about 20% of their population, and then the public system, about 80%. And they were spot on in both communities. So it, it, you know, we, we know it can work. We know how powerful it can be. And so for those of you who are interested in that sort of thing, absolutely. OK, we have another question. Please go ahead and identify yourself and your institution. Hello, um, I'm James. I'm a currently a six-year DMD PhD candidate at the University of Florida College of Dentistry. And I'll be serving as a president of the National Student Research Group this year. And Dr. Tapek, thank you very much for um, giving us a, a Zoom session. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> so the goal for my um, this year um, is to continue to motivate the um, current dual degree students to continue what they have been doing, you know, pursuing um, the route of becoming a dentist scientist and, you know, continue to motivate themselves to, you know, do that. And also like to introduce this um, dental academic career pathway to the current dental students and also like to encourage the pre-dental students to apply to the dual degree programs because I realize that actually a good number of pre-dental students don't know about these programs. Um, and I'm thankful that the um, NIH, NID share has provided very generous support, including the T90 grant, F30, and K12, and loan repayment program. But um, what are some of your new ideas that can potentially you know, increase the um, you know, retention rate and reduce the attrition rate, some of the new programs you're thinking? Well, we should turn to Dr. Yeah. D'Souza. We have several, as you know, James, we have several initiatives um, that are taking care of what was predicted to be the leakiest of pipe, leakiest um, spots in our pipeline. Um, the transition between pre-doc and post-doc now is covered with a grant. Between post-doc and early f and first faculty position is covered. We support the Mind the Future program that AADOCR has run with great success where in that third round, well, the first two rounds yielded 60% of early stage investigators who got their grant from NIH. So there are, there's something along this pipeline that is available for every student throughout the continuum of development. Now, what has to change, and I made that quite clear when we met in our training brainstorming this morning and yesterday with the deans, is the ownership has to be shared with dental schools and their leaders and the organizations that are DEAR and ADA. If we don't share values, then we, then we can get this done, right? And so that is what we're doing right now, is changing, the, hopefully, uh, the views and the values, the culture that allows for us to sustain these individuals in successful careers. And Dr. Tabak was the one who initiated the, the very uh, successful grant uh, that would allow you to combine specialty and PhD training. I think it was in New York time because I was on council then, Larry. And it's proving to be very effective. But then at the paradox that Dana mentioned this morning is that schools are complaining they don't have enough faculty. They have something like thousands of vacancies. And yet, our DDS PhD, our clinicians, clinician scientists are not finding the right home that can cater. So there's, there's a gap there, and we're going to work together to actually make it better. But it takes a village. <laughs> okay, we have time for, I think, one more question. So please identify yourself and your institution. My name is Judith Jones, and I'm with the University of Detroit Mercy. And what I want to ask is, is um, you mentioned it already, Larry, the electronic de um, medical records. And now we have some electronic dental records. However, they don't use diagnostic coding very much. And I was wondering if the NIDCR and the ADA and the other organizations can get together and really work together to, to institute a common coding system that can be used and incentivized by the insurance companies so that we can actually use the data that are being collected.
integrated data set array. So just to share that it will take getting the agencies together to come to build a common language. And we also need to grow from being procedure-based to being more diagnostic as we think about the whole health, health, whole health of the patient. And that'll be a cultural change. But in the meantime, we need to learn from what we have. And there are resources out there where medical and dental data have been merged, also with some social determinants of health data. Um, some of that is there's some CMS data that has merged. There's the OCEAN. There's the OCEAN. She's telling me to turn around. There's the. Uh, <laughs> um, there's data from the Pacific Northwest that we're working with, and then also the middle of the country. So we're working to put that all together to become a resource. And actually, I just learned about another one 10 minutes before I came into this session, um, where a portal has been made that has data from across all, every single state, from the state dental perspective, okay? What a great resource. So this data-driven solutions that Rena mentioned earlier is a real opportunity to centralize these data and make them available to all the country. While in the meantime, in parallel, we're working on getting people together come, so we can come together on a common language. But always keeping in mind that the business of NIDCR is to create the new science from these data sets that can actually create the evidence base we need to drive policy reform. We're not in the business that ADA and ADEA are in. So, but we do need to collaborate with industry partners like Maria Ryan and others to actually make this possible. Okay, so in the interest of time, oh, you guys look ready to go. <laughs> in the interest of time, we'll move forward to the next segment of our symposium. We wanna thank our previous directors. <laughs>